Hello and welcome to video number two. We're going to talk about some case studies, comparison between services, and the results that we got. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First, I want to talk about GetResponse.com, Aweber, and other services like it. Don't get me wrong. I like GetResponse.com, and I use Aweber.com. In fact, I use them. And so I'm not going to knock these services. I just want to kind of show you the services that I've used, the services that I've tested, and it gives you other different routes. But in terms of GetResponse.com, I found that in terms of deliverability rates and whether or not the emails go to the inboxes or the spam folder, generally speaking, I found that they hit the subscribers inboxes so very very good deliverability rates very very expensive in the long term of course if you're earning enough money then it should be well worth it it's not as import friendly i know with aweber.com if you import leads normally what will happen is you can't just import them and start emailing them. If you import the leads, then a lot of times people have to confirm their email address in order to actually receive emails from you. So that can be a problem in itself. GetResponse.com can import, and it's possible to do that. But when you begin to import really massive, large lists, that's when they begin to stop and try to test your list. So that can be a roadblock in, in itself, but they are really good services. They're just really expensive in the long term. My goal in this video series is to show you some sort of solution that is not as expensive long term, great deliverability and import friendly. Amazon AWS, not a whole lot of people use this simply because it is not newbie friendly. The way Amazon AWS is set up, it's primarily for expert web developers who know what they're doing. So in order to use Amazon AWS, you need to use scripts that have been developed out on the internet. And there are far and few, but in my head, there are about two currently. There's one that's a Windows desktop application, so it's not necessarily the optimal type of solution. And there's another one on CodeCanyon.net, which is another solution. It's a $14 script, but I tested it out. I used it for about a month. Sometimes it was hit or miss. In terms of deliverability rates, it would work. Sometimes it wouldn't work and so forth. I know somebody who invested about $2,000 to get a expert web developer to get them to integrate Amazon AWS into their email system. It worked for maybe about a few weeks and then it stopped working. So I experienced the same thing. Uh, you might experience something different, and I'm not going to knock Amazon AWS simply because it might work for you. It might not work for you, but in terms of my case and another friend's case, in both cases, they did not work. Uh, deliverability was hit or miss, so I cannot really recommend that. So expensive all around, not as newbie friendly. Maybe that'll change in the near future but in terms of their other services like their hosting and everything else it's great server hosted scripts sort of like the email scripts that you host on your website they're great for importing emails so it gives you the freedom and flexibility to import emails nobody can say that you cannot do it because it's on your own you know website so ideally that's an awesome solution but the problem that you will face is that most of them use what we call php mail 
It's a function that is within the script and usually like Gmail, Yahoo Mail, and, and all these other mail services, when they detect that mail has been sent using PHP mail, they don't like that. They actually make it so they detect that as spam. When they detect that as spam, because PHP mail is basically a way where when you send out email from a hosted site, the receiver like Gmail, Yahoo, and other services can't really detect if that mail is legitimate or not. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, then uh, don't worry. It's really not going to be complicated. I'm just talking about different comparisons. So one other downside is a lot of these scripts use one IP address. And that IP address normally is your website IP address. So if you don't know, every website basically has an IP address. And this opens it up to IP blacklisting. So basically, if every time you send out an email, and let's say out of a thousand people or 10,000 people, 100 people click on the spam button in their Gmail account, in their Yahoo account, in their Outlook Express account or whatsoever. Whenever they click on that spam button, it communicates to that specific email service and it says something about your credibility. What happens later on is that can open you up to blacklisting. So eventually what's going to happen is the emails that are being sent will actually end up in people's spam folders. So that's not really the most ideal situation. And that's why I cannot really recommend server hosted scripts. Now you might have server hosted scripts which have the ability to use proxies or different IP addresses. And if that is the case, then that might be the route to go. Uh, but server hosted scripts that are only one IP address and uses PHP mail may not be the necessary and ideal situation. Now this video course is about cloud SMTP. This is basically a service that is provided by websites and email companies and it works great. Some services are great. Some services are subpar unless they have some sort of technology where whenever the email is sent out, Gmail or the receiver can detect that where does the email come from. If they can detect where the email comes from, then the deliverability rate will actually increase. It's sort of like credibility. Who are you getting your opinions from? Are you getting it from somebody who is credible or are you getting it from somebody who is not really credible? If that's the case, you're probably going to ignore their message. So very, very similar analogy in that case. So Mailjet is just one of the many different services that we found. I like Mailjet. I personally use Mailjet, and that's why I'm going to recommend Mailjet. What I found with Mailjet.com is is low cost for long term, even as your list grows. So if you have a list of 500 now, if you have a list that grows to 5,000, you're going to pay paying about 10, 20 bucks a month. So not a lot of money. The deliverability rate was really, really good. It hits the inboxes. They actually have a lot of optional uh, kind of configuration settings like SPF, which allows you to increase your deliverability rates. And I'll talk more about that in the future videos, you know, how to implement this kind of stuff. It is optional, but even though I say it's optional, if I were you, I would do as much as I would try to do to increase the probability of your emails getting to people's inboxes. So with that said, let's move on to video number three. And we're going to start with Mailjet. I'm going to talk about other cloud SMT services that are available to you. You can make your own decision. You can follow this video course, use Mailjet.com and use other systems as well.